It's Friday night in the A, and you know what that means. Kelly Price and Tori McElhaney coming at you on Rise Up Tonight. Presented by AT&T. Ritter Ruckus, rejoice. You got your man. We're stepping out of the bye week and maybe into a new era of Falcons football here. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that Desmond Ritter is QB1 in Atlanta. And oh my goodness, we have so much to learn about him. And so much to talk about. Yes. This entire episode actually brought to you by the Ritter Ruckus trademark. Tori McElhaney, an official sponsor here. Uh, but we've got a lot to discuss, so let's huddle up. Let's huddle up with Kelly and Tori on the world of Falcons football. So the biggest question is, why now? Something that I don't think can be overlooked is how Arthur Smith said in his quarterback change announcement that this is what's best for where the team is at, but also where Desmond Ritter is at. He and quarterbacks coach Charles London told us this week that they've seen exponential growth in Ritter just in the last month, simultaneous with a regression the Falcons have seen offensively on the field during that time. So it seems like that's exactly why now, right? Yeah, no, think of it this way. Do you remember those graphs that we used to look at all the time in elementary school math? Well, let let me paint you a picture. Desmond Ritter's trajectory is on the x-axis. The Falcons offense production is on the y-axis. Those two lines have been moving down the graph as time goes on, but it wasn't until a week ago that those lines not only met, but intersected. I think it's also important to note, and I'll say this, that Marcus Mariota's knee injury does not factor into this graph at all. Marcus has been put on IR, but that's not even an outlier on this graph. The decision to start Desmond Ritter was one made because the Falcons felt that Ritter was ready and the offense needed to be pushed. It was not a decision made out of a response to injury. I like the graph analogy. The math is certainly mathing. <laughs> Ritter even said the other day he might not have been as ready as he is right now four or five weeks ago, but now he feels fully ready and he's even more excited than his supporters online. You know, at the end of the day, like we said, this is my dream job. This is what I wanted to do. Um, you know, the only difference, you know, like I was saying, between last week and this week is these 13 cameras. Um, so everything else I'm doing in between there, and you know, it's the same that I've been doing. As, you know, that's what I was preparing to do the, the past 16 weeks, whatever it may be since camp, however long it's been, um, was just preparing like I was a starter, like I said earlier. So um, coming in this week, you know, haven't changed anything. Just, um, and, you know, adding on, just try to do as much as I can to be prepared. You can't know you're fully prepared, but you can, you know, prepare compared to the foolish. I'm going to try to make a quote there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was actually really solid. So I enjoy media sessions with Desmond Ritter, truly, because he just comes off so genuine, honest, mature, confident, all the things that you want to see from him, right? Tori, maybe what was what the most notable or interesting thing that he said earlier this week? So you can feel that this is a guy who isn't afraid of leading. He isn't afraid to take charge. And I actually go back to something Charles London said in our availability with him earlier in the day when he was talking about Ritter entering every huddle with conviction. He wasn't fumbling over his words to get the play call in. He did so with confidence and without missing a beat. That picture came into came to life as Ritter was talking about his comfort in this game with us uh, uh, later in the day. You feel that ability when he speaks. Also, if he keeps giving us quotes and sound bites like that, I'll look forward <laughs> to his pressers every week. <laughs> Absolutely. So we've heard Smith talk a lot about how he hopes his team can get over the hump. Tall task for a rookie making his very first start, but what can the realistic expectations be for Desmond Ritter? Yes, so I know that we're talking a lot about Ritter, and yes, I know there is a very large contingency of this fan base that is excited to see him. And heck, I'll be honest, I am excited to see what the Falcons have in him. But taper expectations, please. <laughs> Playing New Orleans in New Orleans with playoff implications on the line is a huge moment for any quarterback, let alone one making his very first NFL start. Right. So set expectations accordingly. Know that Ritter is going to make rookie quarterback mistakes. Know that there's a chance this offense won't be productive at times, and don't get your hopes up that Desmond Ritter is the savior of Falcons football <laughs> because honestly that's just not fair and your reasonable expectation with Ritter on Sunday is to be patient with him and the Falcons offense as they figure out how to operate with him. Good advice and I hope you guys are all listening to what Tori said there. Well expectations are always high for the Falcons pregame fashion statements. We're walking in presented by Wells Fargo. <laughs> Today's show obviously has a clear theme. Desmond Ritter knew what he was doing wearing the statement shirt. He really do be manifesting. Here's the thing, doesn't it kind of look like the Atlanta Georgia Changed My Life sweatshirt that CP wore all last year? It's similar font and everything. And let's be honest, it worked out for CP pretty well. Trey Young's been wearing it as well. It's been working out for all of those guys. Next up, Rashawn Evans giving us the game day grimace, which is kind of funny juxtaposed with his fun fit. I don't know if it's like tie-dye exactly, but I really like the matching set. 
but okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. This may be one of my favorite fits of the season because Ooh. it's just so different than some of the other fits that we've seen all along the season. And I also love the splashes of pink in there. Ooh. Nice touch. Yes. Next up, an all black ensemble for Darren Hall. I can get behind an all black moment, but this one kind of reminds me of like a coloring book that you have to fill in. A good point. And what I'll <laughs> say about this is I know you say you saw a coloring book. To me, I actually feel like it's something that I've seen at the High Museum because there is so much detail in there. Ooh, some high art in our Falcon Spits. I love it. So we've talked to the guys about their favorite cheat meals in the past, but this week we asked, what's the food that you love that everyone else seems to hate in our question of the week? I don't know, because I'm, I'm pretty picky myself. So I don't really like too like crazy, off the wall types of food. So I say, uh, I like Brussels sprouts. A lot of people don't like Brussels sprouts, but other than that, yeah, I'm pretty regular. Here is avocado, and I'm very, very surprised. I mean, I'm a Cali boy, so I love avocado, and that's where we go. But um, yeah, they be getting on me about avocado here, and I'm kind of thrown off by it. Pretty basic, but I would say green bean casserole on Thanksgiving, I'm a huge proponent of. Um, I know some people, you know, have hard stances on it, but I'm a huge, uh, I love it, so. Okay. Well, Drake, we're on Team Avocados with you there. Oh, yeah, 100%. Well, coming up later in the show, an old friend makes his return. My guy Harry Douglas back on Rise Up tonight like he never left. Don't miss that later in the show. Plus, the Falcons named their Walter Payton Man of the Year during the bye week. More on that coming up next on Rise Up Tonight. Rise Up Tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. By Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing, and by Truett, committed to a better future. The Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award recognizes one player for outstanding community service activities off the field as well as excellence on it. Few embody that description more than Falcons right guard Chris Lindstrom. Over the past four years, he's been instrumental in launching a Georgia chapter of Best Buddies. And his best buddy, Michael, was one of a few loved ones and people he's touched who wrote him some heartfelt letters when he was surprised with the news in this emotional video that the Falcons released. I sat down with him to talk about this prestigious honor as we rise up for Atlanta, brought to you by Truist. What was it like for you to get that news? Uh, surreal. Really, really surreal. Um, it's an incredible honor and I'm just really grateful for it and all the work that the community, uh, like our team has done in the community and our community relations staff is they don't get enough credit for all that they do and they make it so easy and I really think Mr. Blank is, I don't know if there's a better owner in the league in setting a standard of um, service in the community and that's something I'm very appreciative that uh, and lucky to be a part of an organization like that. The Falcons put out a video of you reading all those letters from your loved ones and people that you've helped over the years. What was it like for you to hear all those words come from them? Uh, I, it, it was incredibly touching and I didn't know it was happening. They told me that it was a holiday Christmas read and I absolutely butchered the read, probably one of the worst things ever. They were just like, oh no, you're good. And then they started handing me the letters. So I was not, not ready for it. Um, but. It was, it was really special and to hear the voices behind the letters and just for them to take the time um, to be able to do that was really, really touching, something I'll always remember. Congratulations to Chris. Yes. Well, a bye week certainly energizes a team, but it feels like the switch at quarterback also kind of brings a spark to this team. When I asked Desmond Ritter about it the other day, he said, maybe, but the biggest spark this team really needs is a win. What does this team need to do on Sunday to make that happen? Yeah, so they need to balance up their offensive tack, I think, first and foremost. I know there are people who would disagree with me, but I'm actually not displeased with the way this defense has been playing as of late. I am wanting to see more from this offense, though. They have one of the least productive passing attacks in the league currently only the Browns are below them we talk about the conviction that Desmond Ritter has about his confidence in the playbook well I felt very similar conviction from Arthur Smith this week when we talked to him about the passing game needing to catch up with the run game's productivity for the Falcons to get over this, this hump that's what needs to happen. I think that's what we all want to see as well. Well, it's wild to think about how the Twitter keyboard warriors calling for Desmond Ritter will get their wish this week. We've got some hot takes of our own still to come. Plus, former Falcons wide receiver and former teammate of Marcus Mariota joins us to talk about this team and much more. That's coming up next. Rise Up Tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. 
by Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing, and by Truist, committed to a better future. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight. Let's head in the nest with Kelly, Tori, and this week's special guest, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Well, we're back from the bye, and we're back with a really awesome In the Nest guest, back like you never left, Harry Douglas, former co-host of the show, ESPN's Rising Star. Thank Hi, you so much you. for being here, HD. No, I'm excited, Kelly. When you when you gave me the call, the first thing I said, I'm going to figure out a time, I'm going to figure out a way that I can go in there because, you know, you're my girl now. We used to do this show together, and uh, you're so professional and diligent, but we had fun doing it, too. So I was going to make time to, to be here with you. Aw, don't make me cry now. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I have to say I had some pretty big shoes to fill that sure. yeah. <laughs> but you've been doing a great job Thank because I've you. been yes. watching from afar right so right. both of y'all have been doing a great job and I actually love the show so rise up tonight make sure y'all all rise up and make sure you watch it every Friday night at midnight so speaking of new faces Desmond Ritter obviously going to be a new face yes. under center for the Falcons what are your thoughts on that whole move for the Falcons well I think at this moment right now this juncture in the season where the team still can make the playoffs because the NFC South is still activated right every team in that division can actually win the division and make the playoffs and host a home playoff game. But for a team that has rushed the football so effectively and needed a little bit more in the past game, I think Desmond Ritter uh, being the quarterback at this juncture in the season is, is, is the right move from Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot, all the guys who made the decision and made the call. Uh, the flip side of that, going to New Orleans and it being your first start against your rival in Caesars Superdome is no longer <laughs> Mercedes. We got the real Mercedes-Benz uh, stadium here. Yeah, we got the real, you know, the real real name yeah. in it here in Atlanta, but I, I think it's remarkable because he can set his career off in a unbelievable manner, in an unbelievable fashion, right, especially with these coaches and these, these players, his teammates and the fan base, so I'm looking forward to seeing this game against the New Orleans Saints, and Kelly, you know exactly how I feel about the Saints <laughs> being from the south side of Atlanta, so I hope it's a great one for Des. That's why we have you here today for that rivalry. Yep. Exactly, so. and I, you know, I'm glad that you brought up, you know, Desmond going down, and I feel like playing New Orleans in New Orleans is a big deal for just about anybody, but a rookie quarterback for his first NFL start, yes. that just feels like one of the biggest moments you could have. I mean, if, if you're sitting there talking to Desmond Ritter, what advice would you give him about like not letting the moment get too big for him? Yeah. Well, I'll say number one, play within the confines of the offense. And I think Arthur Smith is going to put him in a position and Dave are going to be successful, right? They're not going to, you know, go out there and try to exploit him because at the end of the day, it is his first start. But I know just about every time when I was playing that we played down there, everything had to be on the salad count because it was so loud. And they do have an amazing fan base. That's one thing I got to give them credit for. It doesn't matter how the team is doing, they're going to go and support the New Orleans Saints down there in New Orleans. So, you know, don't let the moment get too big. Don't let the highs be too high. Don't let the lows be too low, but stay even keel. Stay cool, calm, and collected. Uh, another quarterback that's young in his third year right now, Jalen Hurts, that's how he is. Yeah. When I watch him play the game of football, he doesn't he doesn't waver. Whether it's second and 20, whether it's third and 19, he stay cool, cool, calm, and collected. And when your teammates, especially when you're a young quarterback, see those things, they feel feed off of that. And then, of course, you were with Marcus Mariota when he was drafted in Tennessee, yes. so you know him super well. I'm just curious what your thoughts are on them sticking with him so long, and maybe do you have insight maybe on how he's kind of feeling right now? Well, I'll say one of the main reasons why I actually think they stuck with him so long is because he does some, he did some amazing things. Sure. One of the main reasons why the run game has been so effective is because he was added to it. Yeah. And now when you add a plus one, the quarterback, into the run game, now defenses have to defend you a different way, mm -hmm. right? You see the zone read. A lot of the times I'm watching the games and he's pulling the football. I'm thinking the running back has it. So if the, he's tricking me in the camera, I know he's tricking the def defender, uh, defense, defenseman. So he, he, he did a great job of that. He always had a positive attitude. Um, he's one of the most un unbelievable guys I've ever played with. Now, you actually were working with the Falcons during training camp. Yes. And tell us a little bit about that experience and what it meant for you to be able to, to do that. Well, it was unbelievable. Number one, I got to give credit to um, – Sarah, I got to give credit to Marquise, the special team coach, Terry Fontenot, the GM, and Arthur Smith, and Dave Ragone, because
because all those ladies and gentlemen welcome me in with open arms, right? And normally, you know, you think you're going into that situation and there are going to be things that you can do, things that you can't do, meetings that you can go in, meetings that you can't go in. It was never like that here in Atlanta. Mm. They allowed me to be in, into everything, actually give my input on some things as well. And I thought it was just a great situation to put, you know, players and well, people doing the internship in. And it wasn't just me, it was everybody who did the internship. Right. So it was just a great thing, a great feeling to actually feel like you're a part of something um, throughout the spring. Obviously it is Saints Week as well, and I know Rivalry Ooh. Week means a lot to you. Get Talk it. a little bit about how big this game is. Um, I think it's huge. Uh, huge number one because it's the next game. Uh, number two because it's your rival, the New Orleans Saints. You know, Atlanta hates New Orleans. Atlanta, uh, New Orleans hates Atlanta. Uh, but we're going to leave it on the football field, right? This is football-wise. <laughs> because, you know, my, 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 my wife's side of the family, they're from New Orleans. And, you know, my ah. grandma Joyce passed away. So I, I, I'm sad because normally I go back and forth with my grandma Joyce, you know, because mm -hmm. she's all New Orleans and whatnot, and I'm all Atlanta. And uh, she passed away about two or three months ago. So I'm not going to be able to have that back and forth with Grandma mm. Joyce. But Grandma Joyce know one thing about me. <laughs> ooh, when it comes to the, ooh, the Saints and the Falcons. It's, 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 it's uh, I'm brutal. It's on. I'm brutal. Yeah, it is on. That's I'm sure. brutal. So it's, it's now it's going to have to be me against my father-in-law. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. We're going to go back and forth with it. But I don't know, just the next game and then an uh, opportunity to move another direction to winning the division mm -hmm. and take another step towards, you know, making the playoffs. In the first game of the year, um, the New Orleans Saints won that game. That's the game I actually thought the Falcons should have won. They rushed yeah. for over 200 yards. Yeah. Um, but crucial mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, at, at, at the end of that game, defensively, guys getting picked off on a three-man wheel and Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry making catches. But at the same time, you know, fumbling inside your own uh, red zone when you right. have an opportunity. You know, another fumble after an explosive catch uh, by Zacchaeus. And then third and one situation where you could potentially pick up a first down and the snap is being fumbled. So on fourth down, now you're punting and, and, and your defense is in a situation where they got to get a stop in which they didn't. So I think they're going to look at all those things. Now the New Orleans team and the Atlanta Falcons team that, that, that we've seen in week one is not going to be what we see in what? What's this? Week 15? Week 15. It's not going to be the same two teams. So you have to look at what they have been doing like the last four or five weeks, right? Uh, different quarterback. You're going to have Andy Dalton. Michael Thomas isn't playing. Yeah. Uh, you have a lot of guys banged up on their side. Some guys coming back. Atlanta looks different. You have guys banged up over here on our side. So uh, you make the proper adjustments and, and see what they've done recently, and, and you, you go accordingly to that. Huge opportunity for the Falcons this week in New Orleans. Thanks so much, Harry. We appreciate you coming oh, by as always. The Thank great you. Kelly, the great Tory. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm here with two magnificent people. Oh, I'm he's out here gassing us up. Know, <laughs> Anyone who wants to catch the full conversation, head to fox5atlanta.com, and we'll be right back on Rise Up Tonight. Hey, Atlanta, this is Head Crack talking, and you're watching Rise Up Tonight, presented by AT&T. It's like I don't get caught up in whatever narrative is after four weeks of the daily narratives. You can almost write some of these narratives and live and die every week by the narratives because it sets up bad, you know, narratives. So you can frame the narrative, you can write narratives. So those are easy narratives. And All right, well, in honor of you getting Taylor Swift tickets this yes. week, yes, congratulations, Thank by you. the way. Thank you. I cried. <laughs> Happy tears, of course. Um, I have to say, my hot take last episode was my mastermind moment. If y'all have not heard the song, the lyrics go, I laid the groundwork and just like clockwork, the dominoes cascaded in there line. There we go. Last time <laughs> out, my hot take was that we might not get to see Desmond Ritter this season, that Marcus Marietta was doing just enough. Well, clearly, Arthur Smith had seen just enough. He made the switch at what appears to be the perfect moment for Ritter and for the team. So. You're welcome, everyone. My sneaky reverse <laughs> psychology worked on everyone. And my hot take this week is that I think this is the right call right now. We love a Taylor Swift mastermind <laughs> moment. I feel like the ladies know. But my hot take this week, this offense may not look too different with Desmond Ritter under center. Why? Because play calling wasn't necessarily the issue in my mind. Collectively, it wasn't that the Falcons were in need of an overhaul of the playbook. It's that they need to execute what they were being asked to do. Falcons coaches noted they would not not be shrinking their playbook to fit Ritter's knowledge of 
of the playbook. He knows it. They may alter it slightly to fit Ritter's strengths, but let's be honest, his strengths are closer to that of Marcus Mariota's than that of Matt Ryan's. That leads me to believe that from an operational standpoint, the Falcons will look quite similar to what they have previously. The difference is that they need more production. Man, got to be honest, I'm more excited for Sunday's game than I have been for a Same. Falcons game in a long time. Yeah. Well, here's hoping we'll have some fun things to talk about next Friday night. For now, good night.